So this is uh, week three, <coughs> and we're talking about how to do heat loss analysis for a system. And in this example, we have to install a new system for the house. Either we're going to go by the old system and copy and paste whatever was in there, which is not a good idea all the time because the system might have been oversized or undersized, or there were some modifications in the system. Uh, or you can do a complete house, quick analysis, and again, it's not very accurate. And the, the best way is to do a room by room. Before you start to play the system, you have, asked, you have to ask yourself a question. Why did the old system fail, and what was the cause? Was it just old age? Was it overwork? Was the ventilation okay? Before you install a new system that's completely the same. Uh, was the system sized correctly? What has changed since the first installation? Are we hitting the same amount of rooms? Is the temperature the same? Did the structure on the house change? That could make a difference. Did they plant some trees now and the trees are long and they're blocking the, the sun? So that could be also an issue. What new technologies can take over the existing systems? And we talked about the primary control and how can we improve that. Uh, zoning. So in the in this system lab tool, we're talking about zoning and using switching relays. Maybe the homeowner now wants to have three zones instead of two. Maybe we're better off using a take valve zone control. Uh, phones off, please. Uh, maybe we should take a zone valve control system instead of adding switches. Maybe we can have more safer equipment. Maybe the code has changed, so we need to upgrade the equipment. So always try to get new equipment in. So step one again, everybody has a floor plan. Get the floor plan, it has the layout, has the number of floors, make sure you have this information. Uh, we want to decide which is the heated and unheated space. Because there is no reason to include unheated space that will increase your heating mode. Uh, house orientation, that matters a lot. Why? Sunlight, what area do you want to be facing the sun? What area is always facing the sun? West, West and south. south. West and south always going to be facing the sun if you are in the north side of the globe. <coughs> so those two areas you want to be having the least amount of windows because that will cause you to have a lot of heat in the summertime. And this time again, we're doing heating and cooling. What do you want a lot? Huh? I mean, it kind of doesn't depend on what you want. <coughs> Yeah, but you do want a lot of uh, windows, a lot of glass, and if you do, put a lot of shades, because just keep in mind that these windows are going to hit by hit, don't get hit by sun the entire year. So in the winter, that'll be useful. Yeah, I mean, like, the wind is colder than it is warm, that's what I'm saying. Say that again? Like, the wind is usually colder than it is warm. Like it's, it's yeah, cold. yeah. So that can be, that can be very useful in the, in the winter time. But if you don't have uh, proper shading or, like, uh, shutter, in the summertime, it will boil your house. It will be really, really hot. Uh, you want windows to be in the north and the east side, that's where you get the light, but you don't get the direct sun, uh, sun heat. Uh, we want to also find the building material. Some of the floor plans have building materials in it, walls, floors, ceiling, windows, doors. If not, what are we going to do? You can open the H22 book and look up some material and assign them and give me your assumptions. <coughs> Geographical data, location temperature, where do you get that? get it in the book. I'd rather you look it up online because things has changed since the 60s. The entire uh, earth has warmed by two degrees and some areas have new extremes. The extreme for a spirit field used to be zero. We saw minus 16 weeks ago. So things has changed. Uh, proximity to, to water, that matters a lot because if you were to use insulation that is cellulose, you don't want to put that in a house that is near the lake or river because that will absorb more, uh, more moisture and eventually it will rot. Uh, if you have a house in the mountains, probably you can do, it's going to be almost dry. Uh, shade, do we have shade? Shade of another building, shade of a fence, shade of trees, that all will count into your house heat, mostly for the heating, after, uh, sorry, mostly for the cooling, because that will provide a cooler, uh, <coughs> cooler air on the house. So step one, get the information. And hopefully we get step one today done. Just jot down all your information, you and your group, agree on the material, that will be good if you can do that. Second step is let's label the rules. Uh, 
So here, I'm going to call room number one, bedroom number two, the bathroom. I'm not going to heat that bathroom. I'm sorry, I'm not going to heat that bathroom. Three is another bedroom. Four, five is the kitchen. And I, mer I uh, merged the dining area and the living room together as room number six. It doesn't have to be this way. You can do it any way you want. However, when you do the heating load for that space, you will eventually size the radiator based on that space. So if you included something, make sure you stick with it and don't change things as you go in the project. And again, these things you have to discuss with the owner of the house because uh, see what, what is their preference. You want to have a barrier between the kitchen and the living room. You want the dining area to be open to the living room. You want to put a corridor here or like a corridor door. You can do that. You want to have two zones. Uh, I strongly will recommend two zones for this <coughs> ranch house if there's one floor. But this one area will be warmer at night than the dining area. And uh, if you have one thermostat, you're going to have uneven heating. If you put the thermostat here, <coughs> and put a 65, what is the temperature here? It might be 80. You might have uneven heating. And you might get it too hot in here, and this will be very cold. So <coughs> make sure you have two zones at least in the house where you have the sleeping area have its own thermostat and the living area has its own thermostat. Any question? So we'll do it floor by floor. We'll, we'll look at it. Basically, if you have two floors, usually the bedrooms are upstairs and the living, stair, uh, living <coughs> is downstairs and you will put two zones. So I, I think each project will have two zones. This is a serious purpose. <coughs> so, what is heated and what is not heated? There are only six rooms to consider in this uh, project. The walk-in closet are not heated because there are no windows and it's not a living space. You don't care if the closet is, is cold. And usually the closet have a door. If it's a walk-in, so no need to heat it. The hallway is not heated because it is open to all the other rooms. So the hallway, we're not gonna put a heater in the hallway because the other rooms will be heated and it will <coughs> dump heat into the hallway. Each back room and laundry room are not heated. Why? There's, there are equipment there that are producing heat and nobody's living there. It's not a lot of big space. And the laundry room, it will get warm once you turn on the washer or dryer, it will warm by itself. Uh, the kitchen will require <coughs> less heat the other room, but we're not going to talk about that because it's dumping heat to the fridge, but we don't count for that. So usually it has less heating. Dining area and living room is combined to one big room. That's what we did for this project only. It doesn't have to be the same all the time. The kitchen will need heat since it's facing the outside and will not get sufficient heat from the dining area. Let's go back and look at it. So the kitchen even though there's an opening to the dining area, it doesn't seem like it's going to get enough heat. It's facing the outside, there's a window, probably there's a vent, so we will have to heat the kitchen. And this can be done either using radiant floor heating or kickboards underneath the, the closets here when we cover the cabinets. Uh, there are other options. You can have a hanging radiant panel, a glove, but there are options, we'll talk about those options. <coughs> Uh, the porch is not included. It's included, not yet heated. So it will be treated as unheated space. However, it's not fully outside temperature. So let's look back at the porch. So the porch is open to the outside. Probably have glass or jealousy windows. Uh, so, and also have a door. If it, if it has a closed door, then this is going to be unheated space, but it's not the outside. It's not the same as the outside. You agree? Yeah. If the door is open, then this is going to be completely the outside. The only difference between the porch and the outside is the wind. If there's no wind coming to it, then it's going to be a different uh, temperature. So, second step, we decided what to heat, what not to heat, and this is going to be between you and your colleague. Look at it, decide 
what material to use, how you're going to need it. <coughs> uh, step three, we calculated filtration. We did that last semester. And these are the factors, it's in the book now. Uh, we will use uh, those two factors. We're not going to use the other one. There's three of them in the H22. The third one is completely foreign. <coughs> no weather storm and no weather strip or storm doors. So these ones actually is what you want to use. Windows and doors are not, actually these ones. Windows and doors are with a strip and with storm sash. If not, use these ones. And we did that again. That is the factor for the number of uh, size of windows and doors. So it's not the number of windows, it's the size where the window is. So if you have two windows on one side, is that the uh, 0.012 or 0.018? First one. First one. So it's the size. Because even if there was two panels, there's going to be how many sides? You can get one side, two sides, it can be three sides too. <coughs> There are some windows that, uh, some that are sticking up and they have three sides of windows. And why does the size matter? Yeah. Sunlight, excellent, what else? Trees. Trees, what else? Wind. Wind is going to come from this, what is it? Infiltration. Yeah, infiltration. And because the wind is going to come from different sides. So if the wind coming from the east, you're going to get some wind. If you go from the east, you're gonna get some wind. So you have more chance for you to get hit by wind. Uh, sun rooms, they take a, a lot of uh, infiltration because it's full of windows. Entry hole is going to be a lot of infiltration because every time you open the door, you have a lot of air out, a lot of air in. Any questions about how to get the infiltration? So infiltration requires, when we calculate the infiltration, <coughs> volume times N times delta T. What is volume? Height times width times length. So volume is a foot cube. If you have inches, what are you gonna do? Just cube. No, but let's say you have uh, one foot and four inches. So you approximate the nearest quarter of an inch. So 1.5. Uh, quarter of foot, yeah, 1.5. So for example, if I have 12 foot and three inches, that's gonna be 12.25 feet. One foot, Equal 12 inches. If you have something smaller than that, if it's 12.2, uh, <coughs> round up to the nearest quarter of an inch. Question about that? So you round up to the next quarter of an inch. Every three inches are quarter of a foot. Sorry. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the imperial systems. I mean, metric is very easy. Nearest is nearer than our lives. Foot cube, height. The, what is the standard height? Eight feet, sometimes it's nine, sometimes it's 10. And people prefer higher ceiling because it feels better, but again, it will cost you more to heat. The higher the ceiling, the more heat you will lose. So that's the, that's the, the volume. What is the infiltration factor? Yeah, from here. You pick one of those. I'm gonna say from the book. Delta T, inside minus outside. T in minus T out. We know that already. So this is done, we're done with the infiltration. Every room will have infiltration and transmission. transmission. So you do the filtration first, then the transmission. And if you look at, at your calculation sheet in the book, it will go through those two one by one. Okay. So step three, we did the infiltration. Step four, transmission. Include floor on top of unheated space and expose there such as 
can deliver the extensions. What does that mean? They have a house here, and this is the, the ceiling. So if this is unheated, if this is heated, let's put this away. So this is heated, there is no delta T. So when we, if we have half the ceiling is heated, half is not heated, Include only the unheated part. So this part is going to be delta T or equal something. So when you do the ceiling, do only the portion of the over the unheated space. Uh, crawl space. So this is pretending the ceiling and the floor. If the floor over a crawl space, there is an equation for that, a factor for that. There is also if it's concrete, if it's wood, if it's unheated in the bottom, you can you have to always count for that. Ceiling is the same way. If it's uh, an attic, it's different than if it's exposed to the outside. For concrete, for uh, uh, what else? Crawl space. Uh, if it has exposed heated pipes, then you don't have to include that over a crawl space. If the crawl space is completely cold, then you have to include that because air is coming through it and it will. Cool. Uh, for concrete floor, if the floor is below grade, use the area, and if it's above grade, use the floor perimeter. That's another tip we have to think about. What does that mean? You have slab and grade. Okay. If it's above grade, like level with the with the ground, we only use the perimeter as our heat loss. What is the perimeter? Yeah. So if this is my so this is the slab on the ground. Uh, use the heat loss will be from here. That will be the perimeter. It's going to be easy, otherwise, just add all the legs. And probably, if you did the heat loss analyst exam, they ask you a question about that. What is the perimeter? Yeah. What does that say that's under the delta C? Here? Yeah, does that say something? Yeah, something. <laughs> it's going to be something. It is something. Something. <laughs> so, you get it? Uh, what would be the perimeter if the house looked like this? You'll see that. Um, you gotta keep adding all those legs together, and that will be your perimeter. How how would you get the area for that? That's gonna be a little bit challenging. Divide into different rooms. Yeah. yeah. Section it out and add it up. Divide them, get into small spaces. And we'll deal with those on case to cases as they come along. Any question about floor and ceilings? We did that uh, last semester. Did we do all this last semester? Yeah. Let's see how it pan out this semester. It's going to be more involved. Include ceiling below unheated attic area of floor. If the third floor or the attic is not heated, you have to include it. If you heat it, then you don't have to include it. Make sense? Why? Because there is no delta T. Otherwise, there is something. There is some heat loss. Are you okay with it? 
I want to include walls that are facing the outside. I hope this is your history by now. Walls shared by other ro uh, heated rooms are not included. Why? Liquid? <coughs> Why? So if I, if I want to do a heat loss from this room, I'm not going to include this wall. Why? Because it's an inside wall. It's not touching the outside. Yeah, but temperature. And the temperature outside probably the same as here. So there's not a lot of heat transfer. Yeah. Outside is always the cold one or the hot one. Uh, wall shared by other heated rooms are not included. Those are treated as cold partition heated packs. So if the if there's another room, a garage. A garage is also called cold partition. It's not heated, but it's not the outside. So that's a cold partition. If the floor above is heated, then there is no heat loss to the ceiling. If the floor below is heated and there is no heat loss to the floor, same idea, just like, think about the delta P here. Uh, think about the equation, Q equal U times A times delta P, delta P is zero, then there is no heat loss. If delta P is one or two, still there is not a lot of heat loss. Question about that? <coughs> Either in space. This is very, very practical example and project. There's nothing that is not practical, just not useful and that you're not going to use. If you're going to do this heat loss analysis, you will use all these things. And it's a lot of fun. You can do this for your own house and see if your if your wall is sized correctly or not. So again, I invite you, you have another week or so to bring your own floor plan if you want. Well sketch out your house and do it. Uh, you'll find out a lot of things back about your house. Step five, add both infiltration and transmission. You get the two factors, we're done. For selected rooms, add together infiltration heat loss and transmission heat loss from the walls, floor, ceiling as applicable. And there you have the room total heat loss. So you get the room total heat loss. What about uh, heat gain in the, in the summer? <coughs> what will change? Temperature, you're gonna have a sort of heat loss, you're gonna have heat gain. And in the past, we used to include the lights. Now we don't. Why? A lot of houses are converting to LEDs, so there's not a lot of heat. Do we add appliances? Not that much. Nobody have a lot of those big tower computers. Anybody have a laptop? Does not produce a lot of heat. So we're not going to do that. But we will include uh, the temperature difference, and that will show you how many BTUs do we need. How many BTUs in one ton of refrigeration? 12,000. 12,000. So well, we'll see how, uh, how many tons do we need. And you will find out also that a lot of houses are super sized in ACs. They don't want to sell you about two tons. Like, oh, why should you get the five tons? Yeah, it's going to be the same price that I'm going to pay for it. Every time it turns on, it's going to, to consume a lot of energy. Step six, compensation. So 15% for bathrooms and bedrooms to make up for latent heat and additional heat. So if you look at the sheets, if it's a bedroom or a bathroom, you add 15% to the heating loss. Why? Bathrooms have a lot of vapor, need humidity, and whenever you evaporate things, you lose heat. So you add 15%. You add 15%. Okay. And for bedrooms, you want to add 15% because you need the, warm, the bedroom to be a little bit hot, warmer to sleep. And because when you sleep, your body temperature drops, so you want to compensate for heat. So 15% capacity is preferred. Add all the rooms together, then add another 15%. Why? If you think about it, the heat loss that we calculated is to maintain the house at 70 degrees. So what about if you, if you go on vacation and your house is at 50? If you don't have this extra 15%, your house is not going to be able to keep up. This, is, this calculation is only to maintain the house at that temperature, not to bring it up from 50 or 40 or zero. So in that 15%, probably if you come to the house and it's at 50 or 45, it will take a few hours to be able to ramp up that uh, heat loss. I'm probably going to do it during the day when it's warmer so you can keep up. So you want 15% extra. So for 15% for bathrooms, and bedrooms for 20%, doesn't matter, around that, and 15 for the total uh, 
system. Software. So these are free softwares you can you can download and buy. That will do the heat loss for you. You plug in you plug in all the numbers and size, and it does it for you. Uh, right soft, it's uh, usually bought by companies. You can go and get a trial version, but then you have to pay for it. And uh, these are three most take companies comfort is there too. But uh, I find them a little bit uh, restrictive. Uh, probably the employer will want you to use the, the software because it, it will print it out nice. But now you can do it by hand using the Excel sheet. So you know which, uh, uh, how you design the room and you can change that back and forth. Uh, the issue with the software is that they have limited database and also they assume all rooms are square and if anything changes the, the software cannot compensate for it. It's better to be able to know what's going on behind the scenes and try to uh, know how to calculate the heat loss and heat gain. So here's an example. It's an example of the started and I'm going to do all the Calculation in the Excel sheet that I showed you. So room one, first of all, you want to put the dimensions. Length, width, and height, 80. Length, width, and height, desired indoor temperature, 80. Somebody wants their room at 80, some people do. Outside flat temperature is a 10, just going to be auto-calculated as a difference. What if you get a minus in here? What does that mean? It's reversed. So I put it here as a function of absolute value. I want the difference between them. So again, I said that last class, what is the difference between uh, inside temperature 80 and outside that's minus 10? 90. 90, so it's gonna be the absolute difference between those two. All right, infiltration, volume. So this will multiply all these two together. Got it, the factor you have to input. And these are going to be all the same for the entire house. It's not going to change. Cast, you get that? These are going to be always the same for the entire project. Factors will change. This will change for every room. Do you agree? Yeah. What about the ceiling? The area will change, but the factor will remain the same. So once you get the factor for the ceiling, you're going to have the same ceiling for the entire house. It's not going to be a different ceiling. Well, sometimes it is, but usually it's not. Floor, again, same thing, area, it's going to be the same as the ceiling. <coughs> and different factor, this time the same. And DT the same. Slab, if any. Windows, you can get the windows with the, the area of the window, the factor. Uh, doors, is outside if you have one. And the walls. So, I think this was an entry hall. There is no walls. Interesting. Okay. But this room has 22,000 BTU. That's room one. So let's, uh, oh, this is just the, this is the blank sheet. Okay. This is the house. First of all, we get the information. Spectral mass. Residential. Outdoor design is zero. Inside is 70. New factors. We get them from the book. Everybody has the book? Yeah, I didn't bring it for us. Yeah. Walls, we pick the walls, wood siding, wood sheathing with two times four, two by four studs. With our installation, and this is the factor from the book, ceiling. I put the description of the ceiling, and I get the factor. For the basement, full basement with eight inch concrete blocks and three quarters inch frame skirt, half inch insulating board, Etc. Get the factor. Write it down. Give me the factor. Windows, vinyl, double glass with storm protection. Three by four, three feet by four feet each. Factor is 0.34. And the doors, wood with storm protection. Factor of 0.29. And this is the details. So I did step one. Question. So today I hope we finish step one. In the afternoon. Just let's sit together and decide on that. What is heated, what is unheated, and what is the material? Once this is done, first it's just a race. Fill in the blanks with the Excel sheet, and boom, hopefully in two weeks we'll get the entire house heating mode and cooling mode. We did the numbers for the rooms. 
six room to consider. We did this before. These are the factors. So I did the filtration for room one. It's a bedroom. And I put the factor in here. There's a notation for each box and how it's filled. I tracked to lock them with this formula so you cannot change them. But uh, the version in, in, uh, in the blackboard is unlocked, so you can change the formulas if you want. Does anybody ever work with Excel before? Okay. Do you have a computer? It's been a while. Or... Can you bring it? Does it have Excel in it? No, I don't think so. Windows 7, 8? Uh, you get it for free if you're a student. Yeah, it's it's, it's free. So bring it over to the whole thing. Free you know? if you're a student, but you gotta log in with a student um, email. Yeah. So uh, bring it over. The school ID here. You paid for it. Only September. As long as you keep putting in your student ID. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. 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 Yeah.